So welcome. Um, I'm going to tell you a lot about the Blockchain Solutions. We are a company out of Canada. Uh, we are, oh, sorry, let me back up. We are on the, the TSX Venture in July. We're on the OTC in the pressure as well. Three different places you should find our stock. Um, there's some forward looking information. I think everybody knows what that means, so be cautious and uh, do your homework. Especially, well, crypto and Kansas, I would say that. Maybe it's your favorite industry. Um, some information about our company before I get into the more nitty gritty of our, our hardware software. Founded in 2016. We went public with a friend's category, who has already been here today, uh, with an RTO in February of 2018. We sort of timed that just perfectly because we just went public, we raised $35 million, and Bitcoin went from $20,000 to like four in about two weeks. So <laughs> good timing for us, maybe not for investors, uh, which has been a little unfortunate. Um, however, uh, with that money, we bought uh, this property at Christina Lake, which is our main uh, facility. We built ourselves a 5 megawatt substation on that property. We have no leases or landowners, or uh, we're not do subject to any utilities because we own all of our infrastructure or private. Um, and so, with that property, uh, throughout crypto winter, so for about two and a half years, we just kept building capacity, um, believing. Rightfully so, as we proved out, that uh, a Bitcoin price will recover with these happenings and giving time and really look for user adoption. Um, so, Christine Lake, uh, it's 33 acres, it's about 500 meters from the US border, um, just north of Spokane. Um, we put all of our miners in the building right now. It's 30,000 square feet, uh, it holds about 45 megawatts. Uh, outside, we use containers, so that's another 15 megawatts that we built this winter site up for. Um, and then on our company, you can see we have about 106 million shares outstanding. We normally trade about 1.6, sometimes 2 million shares a day. We're normally quite liquid. We just won one of the top 10 liquidity uh, prizes from TSX Venture Exchange for the amount of volume that we have on our share. Right now, it's a bit low. Bitcoin price is a bit low. The market's come down at about Bitcoin miners. Uh, so our, our bond is a little bit lower right now. Uh, last quarter, Q1, we, we had about $27 million in cash and cash equivalent in the bank. Which is uh, quite nice, and 120 million dollars approximately in assets. So we've really built a strong base of assets and cash. Um, I just put out this morning our numbers for last month. We mined 88 bitcoins, so it's about three bitcoins a day. Um, so again, very good numbers for us uh, as a bitcoin mining uh, for company. Moving into some of our milestones, as I said, we started back in 2016, but we went public in 2018. Um, you can see a few of the things we did in 2018 our mining facility. We bought a company in 2018 in Silicon Valley called Boxier, uh, which is an analytics company, um, very similar to Chainalysis and Cybertrace. Uh, with that company, we put some more development into it and created uh, a mine manager and a wall store project um, that uh, we use right now. Uh, we also launched our uh, first pools back in 2020. Um, 2021, uh, we went and uh, with the price of Bitcoin up, going up and that real adoption from institutional players. Uh, we would raise some more money so we could build our capacity and put the mining. So we raised another $98 million uh, approximately a year ago now. Um, since then, we've really been working on a couple of big ideas. One is around software and how to move crypto around in a very compliant way, meaning all of the rules and regulations that banks are looking for. Um, as well, we put a lot of our uh, proceeds from our race into new machines. And so we've uh, uh, committed to buying an exa hash or putting an exa hash to put mining on our network. Uh, and we're about uh, 60% there. They're so almost fully done by the end of this year. So the recent things, uh, you know, DNG and Argo were the first to sign the crypto climate court as a signatory. Uh, from that partnership of how we got together, we turned around and created a pool called Terra Pool. We're going to talk more about that. It's the only clean energy pool uh, that exists right now, so everybody's carbon free in the crypto mining. Um, on top of that, uh, we invest in Black Box, helps us build our charge quicker, so we just have a small stake of 15%. It's really important that you'll see our efforts in other crypto companies. One of the problems that most are having is infrastructure. So getting transformers, getting PDUs, getting that equipment built and delivered on site and installed. So Black Box really helps us uh, increase their speed to that. 
We put $3 million in the brain capital. Um, they're a Canadian custody company. Um, basically, we want to use their solutions to custody our, our uh, crypto. So we right now custody with brain capital around $15 million of crypto. Um, as well, we've invested in Bosonic, which is a crypto layer to exchange. That layer to exchange is actually running right now. We have coins on it. We can buy and sell coins ourselves. We haven't opened it up to clients yet, but we're getting closer to onboarding third party clients. Mainly, we're going to be targeting other miners that use our pools. And so we have two pools. I'll talk a little bit more, but uh, those pools you know, create a lot of coins and gives us an opportunity to make some revenue off of trade those coins with fiat currency. Um, the other thing that we've done that uh, a lot of people don't quite understand yet, and we get messages to our investor relations about this, is what Petra is. And I'll talk about Petra a bit more, but basically Petra is a technology we use where we can inject transactions, so Bitcoin transactions, we do RDA, RDB, into a block that we choose on a pool we choose. And it's a really powerful thing when we're looking at AML and KYC, having you know, the choice of where your transactions go, instead of going to any foreign pool in a, in a jurisdiction that we we may not agree with our, 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 we may not do all the business with. So those are, are my main highlights. Sometimes I get on this highlight, I think they're half an hour, but we don't have enough time. So, mm -hmm. keep moving. So g, &G as I said, um, we have a sort of hardware business, which is our core Bitcoin mining side, and then we have a software business. Um, and so our philosophy early on, uh, when we started the company that went public, was that, you know, you can make a Bitcoin once and you can put it on your balance sheet, you can, you know, sell it to uh, the cash we need to run your operation. Uh, but if you can transact with Bitcoin, you can make transaction fees forever. So we wanted to have both of those. And we thought that, you know, our knowledge of how Bitcoin works, our knowledge as a miner, our understanding of how the Bitcoin protocols work um, from a very technical way, especially with our uh, acquisition of blocks here, gave us a lot of insight to how Bitcoin moves around um, from a technology point of view that a lot of people haven't looked at. And we really took a serious look at what in the software world could we do that is different from a Fireblox or a Copper or a Coinbase or whoever's out there. What, what can we do with our knowledge? And we came up with some really good products that I'll go through uh, on the core plus side of our presentation. So the way I look at it and the way BNG looks at it, the ecosystem of crypto mining and the crypto industry, and again, we're, we're Bitcoin mainly, we don't really do Ethereum and other coins. Um, is, is, is this sort of triangle here. So at the bottom, you see our flagship, you know, the whole uh, industry of crypto mining is based on having reliable power infrastructure. And you'll hear over and over large and larger projects, the biggest issue of getting crypto mining operations going is to access the power at a reasonable cost and ensuring that that power is consistent um, and not always payable, payable helps the cost. And this will help the consistency of wind blocks to get revenue. Um, then it's the supply chain issue. Um, a lot of people have talked about the issue of shortage of shortness of chips and being able to get access to supplies that mainly come out of Chinese manufacturers. That's starting to change the Intel and update the game, uh, which hopefully will help uh, on the cost side and supply side of getting hardware. But there's a lot of other things that go into being a Bitcoin miner, and you'll also see sort of data center design and efficiencies. These are things like having a very good management system for managing your soft, uh, your hardware. So you can <coughs> overclock, underclock equipment, you can find out what's wrong, you can restart it. You can tell your workers what needs to be fixed. So you need to fix this hash board or this fan. And so it just optimizes the way you run your equipment, as well as some of the new technologies around immersion cooling. Most miners now talking and moving into immersion cooling. DMG, we've been working with immersion cooling for a while now, and we're getting pretty close to a full rollout of that Christian Light building that immersion. We've said we would do a few times. Um, a little bit slower than we wanted, just the supply chain issues, but it's coming. Um, but on top of that, if you if you kind of look at the last two, this is the, the software side. And so a Bitcoin miner traditionally is a hardware miner. We they buy the hardware, they add the power, they connect it to the network, the network goes to a pool. The pool then is what they get the rewards from. It's it's a partitioning of the pool. We build pools. We have two pools that we, we build and manage. Um, we build wallets. Uh, we build analysis software like blocks your wallet store, a little bit AML, KYC, on top of just being a Bitcoin miner. So we are in the business of making profit off of other miners that Bitcoin mine using our software solutions. And so when you look at DMG, because we've gone into the data analytics of spreadsheets early on with the uh, acquisition of Blockseer, 
we've taken a lot of the knowledge of how the blocks work and how the technology works. We started creating products on top of that, then we can get transactional fees as other people use the blockchain. And so we look at our sort of market, our universe of where we could find profits uh, for our company in this little picture here. And I've spent a lot of time on this picture in the, in the past, and we're going to actually upgrade and make it a little bit better. But if you look at BTC mining, so I've been talking about a lot on that, that last period, the, the power infrastructure and hardware, it's about $16 billion a year. I mean, depending on what you, you put for the Bitcoin price, but it's in general about 350,000 coins generated from the Bitcoin network every year. Um, and then, of course, there'll be happening if we have that um, in two years. But all the miners you see, DMG Riot, Hive, Hyde, all good, good companies, you know them all very well, our friends. They're going after $16 billion business in general, and they're all spending a lot of capital to go after $16 billion to get their piece of that uh, every, every year. Um, we're doing that, not maybe as aggressive as you know a high or a high or a high, um, but we're also going after the bottom part, the $2 trillion business, this whole world of transactional fees that Coinbase is getting to go to block high as others. And we're going after that in a very specific way. And the way we're doing that is really focused on regulatory compliance. So we're building products specifically for regulatory compliance and moving crypto over. So when you look at EMG's two businesses, we have a core business, and I'll just quickly go through it. Um, as, I, as I said already, um, you know, we could write 60 megawatts with optimization. But what's more interesting for most investors is this slide here where our plan is and where we're going to be heading towards. So at the end of this year, we're looking at having one extra hash. So if you look at our coin generation for the last month, it was 88 coins with about six, five hundred fifty six hundred five hash for last month. So you can look at sort of doubling that. So we should be getting 170 to 200 coins by the end of the year. So it's a quite a jump in our revenue. Um, but also our facility can double. <laughs> and so we're also looking at the ability to go and buy another extra hash. And we know micro B team, we know uh, Bitmain, we know Canon and all. And Intel as well. So we're watching, and normally what we like to do is not do a long term contract. We like to do a spot deal so we could train everything up immediately. And there's a lot of savings in doing that versus getting deliveries month after month after month. So it's really about managing cash and ensuring that there's an ROI that's strong enough to make that deal happen. I've spoken publicly a few times about the ROI of buying machines. There's been a lot of companies that have bought a lot of machines at a very expensive price. That it's going to be very difficult to get that ROI in here. If we aim for a one year ROI on all of our investments, um, whether it's emergent cooling, whether it's software, whether it's uh, machines. So uh, it's a very important number for us because we're trying to manage a lot of money. Um, as well, we're trying to manage a lot of risk. As you can see, the point price never does what you think it's going to do. Everybody thought it would be $100,000 or more by now, and it's you know, 38 to 40, it's jumping all the places, so it's sideways. And to take a lot of capital and not really uh, have the information over that, you know, how long they get that capital back is a really risky thing to do with the share of the money. So we're, we're actually quite conservative on spending up our, our money on crypto missions. Just a couple of pictures, um, what it looks like, how long people have been in There's quite a few. Um, some of you who may know me know that I used to be the head of Bitcoin here in Canada, built the largest site of the Bitcoin before starting to be the benefits for a long time. Um, I also uh, helped Bitmain get the Rockdale site off the ground running a few years ago, and uh, I'm in fact there soon. I was talking to them again yesterday. So I've done a lot of uh, crypto mines that have built and run um, in the past, as well as deep these assets. But what's really interesting outside of crypto mining is our core plus. And as I was saying on the software side, I break it into two parts safety and security and regulatory compliance. Safety and security for us is the core, it's the company, it's the software that we bought uh, from um, Bloxier, it's called Bloxier Explorer, and it really just goes to the blockchain, just like Cypher Trace and, and Chain Analysis. And you can see the transactions that are happening between different parties. Sometimes you know who the parties are, sometimes you don't, it depends on, on the software you use. Um, we have been uh, collecting data on transactions since 2015, so we have a lot of the data um, that tells us. With different levels of certainty, uh, what wallet is owned by whom. And of course, the wallets we don't know, but the way our cluster mechanism works, we can dust different transactions and figure out who's who, whether it's a gambling, whether it's a pool, whether it's a miner, whether it's a bank, we can figure out uh, 
very accurately who owns what wallets and how many of them and how they propagate. And so that's what Explorer does. Um, when we look into naming who is uh, behind your transaction, that's our, our wallet score product. So these, these two are sort of similar, but they're a little bit different. It's more of an AML product, and this is more of a safety security product looking at transactions. Um, on top of those two products that came out, originally came out of our acquisition of Logs here, um, we built two more products, Helm and our mining tools. And Helm is how we manage all, those, all the hardware that's in the mine and how it communicates and works. And then the pools are how all the servers work together to try and find a block, close that block, make block to work. And so when you look uh, through the stack, you'll see that um, uh, four of them are colored in blue and uh, three are in black. So the four in blue are ones that are off and operating right now, the ones that are black are operating, but they haven't been released for licensing or for revenue yet. Um, and so the impact was in there as well, uh, and I'll speak to that in a minute. So when you just, I did a couple screenshots, just it's easier if you can see the thing and get an idea what it looks like. Block Seer is our original one that we bought. Um, it was made by data scientists, so it's kind of ugly. The UI is not that nice, but we're working on making it look nicer for people. Um, I know that the uh, uh, chain analysis and they have a very nice UI. Um, this is our pools. So we have two pools. A lot of people don't understand this. Um, we have Maripool. So Marathon is the largest uh, crypto miner in North America. I guess you can debate that against Bright others, but um, they saw our technology and uh, they play labels and locks their pool technology. We call them Maripool. So we run that pool for them. We get pool feature running that, that pool for them. Um, as well, we have Terrapool, which we started up with Argo. That pool's running right now. We haven't onboarded any other companies for Argo right now, but we're looking at on onboarding more in the next month or two. Um, the pool is a bit more complicated than, than Maripool. So Maripool is basically Marathon self-mining. Um, they have a few friends on there, but mainly just Marathon on there. Whereas Terrapool, you know, we're going to accept anybody that applies to it, but we're going to only accept them if they have sustainable energy. So we have to do a bit of an energy audit. So this is through our participation with Crypto Climate Report and Energy Web. Um, so they're sort of our partners that are putting all that together, and uh, we're looking at onboard your first clients in the next week or two. So we're pretty excited about being able to announce it. Companies that we have checked and know that they're on clean energy that will be mining on our pool. Um, blocks here, Helm. This is actually um, the backbone of the pool. So when the pool works, it needs to be able to communicate with all the miners. So our Helm software was sort of two thirds of a pool was just our, our software ability to communicate with the miners. We just lay a pool on top of that and work with manager to work with the Bitcoin core program. And that's how we created the pool. So we've had this running for ourselves for about five years. And we used ourselves forever and then we started recently, recently licensing it out. Um, and we've been licensing it to people that use our pool. So the people that are, uh, are using it right now are Argo and Marathon. So we've run around 10 or 15,000 machines for, for other companies besides their own. Uh, wall store, uh, is, as I said, it, it looks at transactions um, between wallets and gives you a risk rating on those wallets. Um, depending on what you're interested in, you can you can see, you know, this is the wallet that's being looked at. The reds are risk ratings around them. Um, and it'll tell you why it's a risk, you know, what's been involved with the coins. Very similar again to chain analysis and with the cipher trace. Um, we use this in our pools do what we call clean block mining or back clean block mining. So we can use this technology to um, filter out transactions that are on the US Department of Treasury pullback list. And so if you want uh, to ensure that you're not doing business with criminals or doing business with wallets that the US government uh, has banned from doing business with, if you're on one of our pools and uh, um, well, our pools do it. So if you're on one of our pools, we will filter out those, those transactions so that you're not doing business with various characters. Um, and this technology is a new technology. We built it over the last year and a half. And um, we actually had a patent. So it's been great to have this technology patent. As well, we've uh, created the technology for Petra that allows us to inject. So not only can we filter out the uh, transaction block, we can inject transactions into a block. We can do both. And so Petra is really interesting. And our pools are really interesting because if you're a bank or a financial institution and you want to, one, make sure you're doing business um, with sort of uh, wallet 
votes that aren't on the blacklist of the U.S. government, or again, we can do other other lists, but the, the main one we look at is OFAC. The two, you want to ensure that your transactions aren't in an pool or after pool or other Chinese pools. They were in a North American pool that's KYC that has OFAC and block mining, and that we have KYC all of our miners for North American hash rates, so we don't have Venezuelan miners or North Korean miners on our pools that we're giving funds to for their their, their share of the hash rate. Um, this is what exactly what we do with Petra and with our pools here in Miracle. So we've given a, a brand new look at how to use a pool. Um, a pool isn't just an agent of how to get Bitcoins. A pool is an agent of how to do this in a very clean, regulatory, compliant way. Um, this slide was just about our, our crypto forensics. It's a small part of our practice. We do a lot of work for law firms and for accounting firms on uh, technical due diligence forensics. I mean, we've done lots of different uh, projects over the years. Um, a little bit about us, you know, on ESG. Um, ESG is how to put that hydro. Uh, obviously, we signed a crypto finance course, so that's a big part of our company. Um, we do a lot with universities. You can see some of our partnerships, I think, in the beginning, for Zodio of Wasame. Uh, Argo Marathon. So we really believe that working with some of the bigger companies and the bigger names will help us grow our business. So we look for partnerships with you know strong companies, strong brands that are going to be around to be able to execute on all, all, all the programs that we want to do. Um, and then this is sort of the last slide, you know, some of our corporate goals for this year as we round out my, my 30 minutes and hopefully there'll be some questions. Uh, I broke it into two sort of two parts. The core, you know, what we're trying to do is for a one extra hash. Uh, with the option of, of doing a second extra hash to simply define the tool that we like. And then Core Plus is really getting the new revenue from Petra Helm and, and, our, and our wallet store products. Um, on top of that, you know, we, as I said before, we have a real focus on follow on follow why It's a very volatile industry, so we're trying to be very good shepherds of our capital and, and use it properly. Um, and we have a strong balance sheet and uh, you know, we're, we want to grow up a little bit more and, and be a billion dollar company just like uh, our peers in the, in the industry. Um, and that's that's my presentation. Uh, a little bit about me and the people on the team. And of course, the point I always are my best in relations company. So I know I did a lot, I usually do it an hour. So I will try not to speak too quickly. Um, but I'm happy to answer any questions. I don't know the price of Bitcoin will be next month. But most other things I can add. <laughs> Just break out your revenue from your mining operation versus your uh, software. Yeah, I do do that in the financials every quarter. Uh, but just to, to tell you, it's about 96% Bitcoin mining and about 4% uh, uh, software. And on the software side, it's licensing. Um, last quarter, we did about $440,000 on the software licensing. Um, that number we expect to grow as the quarters go by as we're spending a lot, we're spending a lot more time getting our software products down. And the, and the biggest products are the mining pools. Uh, as the pools get larger, we get larger revenue from our percentage of the coins that are generated. And from our new Petra products, um, Petra and, um, and uh, uh, Vault Score. So those are the products that are bringing most of our revenue and we continue to bring. Um, not directly, but I, as I said, our, our partnership with Wilsonic for our exchange, um, so the back end of our exchange, so that is actually a other two exchange, so it works similar to like the network, so it has counter, it takes away counterpart of this, and that's when you saw, in my investments, they're actually quite strategic, you know, so brain is because of the custody of Wilsonic because of the exchange. Um, so they kind of go together. So for me to start moving points around, if I have a pool generating at least four hundred thousand dollars a day coins, I need to put them into a proper custody. That custody I want to hold them there as long as I can and offer services to the clients that need their pools. Um, and then you know one of those services are exchange and fiat. You know, other services are hold them, um, especially if you're looking at doing on the wall side of these priests and short wallets where you know you'll you'll pay a bit of money. As a team, you'll have to ensure the client holds that company with us. Big financial people following your company or involved with your company? Um, so, on the banking side, I mean, it's been Canaccord and HC Labor. Um, so, they're not bankers traditionally. Canaccord and Canada and HC Labor in the US. 
Mason Wainwright covers us, so we've got coverage from Mason or Mason Wainwright. Um, BMO in Canada, we're discussing coverage with them right now. Just AC Wainwright right now, and that has the best of coverage. We, we'd like to get, you know, we ride together, so we talk to them and see if we can get them interested. But we are, you know, a smaller Canadian company. Um, we're not, you know, uh, the marathon size yet. Um, but I think, you know, when you look at our stock and you look at other stocks, we perform quite well for what's happened with other uh, companies that are in our peer group. And I think the value and the ability of our stock to rebound quite, quite strong is there. Our stock has done it a few times. So when you're looking at, you know, where do I put my money? In? So the market's down for the miners, obviously. So when you look at where do I want to put my capital, p and is really interesting when they put in because you can see that we've had days, you know, we're able to trade shorter down here. We have days doing 30 million shares in a day. Um, so anybody can get our access to our stock. And you'll see that, you know, we've, we've been able to jump, you know, hundreds of percent a day um, based on what's happening in the market. So we uh, we have a very interesting stock that way. Are you going to be attending any of those big conferences coming up? Yeah, we do. Austin, Texas, and so we do most of the big ones. We did Miami, Bitcoin 2022. Um, we'll be at Mind Disrupt in Miami and then again in about two months. Um, and that one is, we have a group there for the year. Um, we're we'll going to be at the HC Lane Conference. I'm going to be at, um, in LA, it's a conference in five weeks. Um, um, I'm trying to remember what it is. I should say, I should say, it's <laughs> could be in conference right now. And so we do go to conferences, best conferences, we go to different trade shows. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, uh, you saw on our partnership slide, we probably have more partners uh, across the crypto spectrum than any other individual company. You see yourself back in 2000. There are two things that affect our price. The one is our results, and I, I have to go in, which is taking me out. And, and two is what's happening in our market. Um, and, and so we do as much as we can on that side, but the market's the market. Uh, okay.